hello. Um, I wanted to show you my attempt of trying to make a black dyed yarn food color. Now, black is a difficult color to achieve because the food color, you're mixing multiple colors. It's blue, red, and I think yellow. Um, yeah, yellow. And you're trying to make those mix and not break and not um, kind of come apart. So I'm going to tell you what I did to get this so far. Um, so first of all, I am working with Knit Picks Hawthorne Finger and Weight Yarn. Um, obviously this would be the bare yarn. It's 80% um, wool and 20% nylon. And I'm using Chef Master Coal Black, and it's a mix of red, blue, and yellow food coloring. It does look pretty black, but when you put it in, it looks pretty purple. So the process that I used so far to get what I have, and what I have, I think it looks a little purplish. It's slightly a charcoalish, but it is, you know, obviously with a hand line, you do get some variation in the colors, but it is semi-solid, um, so that's nice. There's no major breaking or color difference I see so far, anyway, in this yarn. Um, the blue is where I have it tied off. So first of all, you're going to tie off your yarn. Um, if you don't know how to do that, it's just kind of using three little figure eights and it holds it together. Most skeins at least come with a couple, I believe. Um, at least these do, the Knit Picks one. So I just add a couple more. I soaked my yarn in just room temperature, reverse osmosis water, um, maybe for 30 minutes, an hour, I'm not even sure, but just till it was soaked. and. The whole idea with this was to try to keep everything room temperature, so I minimized one color absorbing quicker than the other. Um, so after soaking, I put six cups in this bowl of the same room temperature reverse osmosis water. I just used my reverse osmosis just in case um, it altered the pH at all and I just didn't want any, um, there's a lot of iron in our water, um, any additional minerals just to throw anything off. So I mixed, before adding the yarn thoroughly, about 10 drops of this. Um, I was talking on the phone, so I think, I think it was 10 drops, but it could have been a little bit more or maybe a little bit less, but I think somewhere around 10 drops, and I know that's not precise. Um, so I stirred it. You have to give it a good stir because this has some sugar in it. So it takes a minute to dissolve, especially in the room temperature. And then I immersed this yarn in the mixture of dye, making sure it was covered. Just come on like that. And then in my other bowl, I mixed one cup of white vinegar and one cup of water. And that's what we have right here is a total of eight cups of liquid, just enough to really cover this. And I let it soak overnight. Now, I don't know if we really needed to go that long. It just, I just left it. Um, it hadn't soaked up everything. And now this water is pretty, clear. I don't see any color left in it. So I think vinegar is still working in there. So I'm going to try, seeing as I don't have quite the saturation I was hoping for. Um, now if you want a nice purpley sort of charcoal color, then this may be a good place to stop. Um, I was hoping to see if I could get the saturation up, so that's what I'm going to try to do now and see if that works. You know, um, 
again, being kind of new with this, I don't know exactly the formulas. And again, you're hand dyeing, so I think there's almost no formula if you're going to use a food coloring. Now, I can share that I like using food color dyes because I'm just using my regular old cooking utensils. I don't have to buy anything separate for um, a chemical dye. So it's food safe, it's food grade. Um, use this in cake. So I think I feel a lot more comfortable with that. But again, there's limitations and black is one of those. So I mean, like I said, this really, it, it does look purple. I think there's a purplish, but there's an ashiness to it. So I'm going to, and this is what I did initially, I'm going to mix five more drops. I think that was two. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm hoping to up my saturation. So again, this is still cold dye bath. I don't know if you can see the purple tones in this, but I'm going to let this sit and see if we can get any deepening of the color. And once, once I get to the end of whatever color we're gonna leave this at, I will just put this in my steamer. Um, I don't have a microwave, so I'll just put in the steamer, heat it up, and set the color. And then I will rinse everything and wash it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in. Um, and again, I'm trying to get as solid as a color of color as possible. So I'm just trying to put it all in at once, get it all covered up. That's why there's so much water in here. And we'll see what happens. Now it was looking more charcoaly last night when it hadn't soaked as long, it hadn't soaked up all the color. So I don't know if a trick may be to pull it out early. Um, Again, it's one of those experimentation processes, but you know, we don't all have enough yarn always to dye to try every single option. So again, why well, sometimes these things are helpful to record and be able to learn and retry. So we will give this some time to soak, um, add more vinegar if needed, but I'm just going to let this sit because I don't want to heat it up at the moment and we will come back to it. Okay, it's been maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, and there is a little bit of blue left in this water. I don't know if you can see that or not, it's, it's not much. Um, but I think most of it has been a swerve from that five extra drops we put in. And I'm pretty sure that this looks a little more saturated. The color looks a little deeper to me. Um, and just for the sake of experimentation, I'm going to put in some more drops and repeat this process to see just how much the saturation matters again. I explain kind of new with messing around with dyeing and with the food colors. So that's what it's looking like right now. Um, I will say the method of using the cold water soak, room temperature water soak, there's no heat that's been added at the moment to this yarn. So no cooking, no nothing. Um, it does seem to give a pretty solid color for a hand dyed yarn. So, I think I will use this method in the future if I am trying to achieve a more solid coloring. I mean, obviously there's a little bit of variegation, but it's it's not crazy like some of the hand-dyed yarns you get. And I'm sure 
I shifted some of this around even, we might get some more absorption in different places. But what I want to do is, I just kind of want to go all out and see if we can get this as close to black as possible. You know, black is pretty hard to achieve, but I'm not displeased with this color. It's a slightly purpley, I'd say purpley charcoal in my opinion, but it's kind of hard to put a name on. Um, I don't know if I would give it to a guy just because of the slight purplish tint. You know, if they're into purple, that's cool, but if not, I'm not sure if that would work out. So I'm going to put 10 more drops for the sake of experimentation just to see if we can get this darker. And two. You can see these drops are really thick. Three. same size um so again this is you know not perfectly maybe reproducible in the sense of the drops aren't exactly the same i guess you could measure it in like a syringe if you wanted to do a certain amount but i don't know i'm not trying to be that precise um if you wanted to dye enough yarn for a sweater i think you just need to get a bigger sort of container or bin to do the dyeing in. It would hold enough of the yarn and try to keep it at least the same um, as far as you know, just the color. So let's see what happens with this. Um, I've not added any vinegar, so this is still my original mixture. Seven cups of water total, one cup of vinegar. And again, I added that in at the end after I already mixed my initial dye. Now, so I've got 25 drops total of the coal black. And yeah, if you wanted to make a darker color, we'll see if the saturation matters um, to a point. If you wanted to make it darker, then you, know, you could start with 25 right off the bat if we like the results of this so I'm just going to give this some more time and we will see what we get hopefully it will be a darker color it's a little bit closer to a true black but I'm not unhappy for sure this is not breaking not separating. Um, when we talk about separating, that is the colors on. You can see the colors on the paper towel. I just put my spatula down, and the black, since it's made up of red and blue and yellow, it actually pull apart. Now it can look really pretty, but it doesn't give you a solid color if that's what you're trying to go for. So I'm going to give this some more time and we will come back to it, hopefully with seeing some increase in saturation of color. Alright, it's been about 45 minutes and this yarn has been soaking in our additional 10 drops. So I still have a little bit of blue left in the water. It hasn't absorbed all of the color, but I did want to go ahead and kind of take a look at where we were at with everything. Let's go ahead and put this back in. And let's pull this out and take a look and see how close we are getting to a true black and getting at our saturation levels. Maybe you can see there's some blue in the water there. So I really, I do think that the 10 extra drops has deepened the color. And I brought down some examples of some true black, just machine made dyed yarn, conventional yarn. So this is a Malayan brand 
uh, thick and quick um, wool acrylic black and you can probably see that there is a tone difference so definitely I see a purplish tone sorry there's animal hair to this and it's not quite as deep purplish reddish tone but it is very pretty and it may look a little different when it dries but overall uh, I'm just going to keep repeating that the cool water process has been nice in keeping the tones pretty consistent across um, rather than getting us a more tonal effect so not again not a true black this is a Croy sock yarn it's a mixture of there's some true black there's some grays in here so just again to get a comparison idea much more purpley not quite as dark so again we'll just have to kind of see what sort of black this comes up to so for the sake of my own curiosity i I'm just curious to see if I can get this any deeper. Obviously, the more food color you add, it seems like, the more saturated the colors become. So we can use that to our advantage. I just don't know what the plateau point will be that we've reached peak saturation no matter how many drops I put in. So um, I think I'm going to give this one more go. And like I said, just for the sake of my own curiosity and seeing if I can get it closer to true black. I'm going to do 10 more drops. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, I don't know how much of this bottle I've used. It still feels like there's a decent amount in there. Um, and this, this may honestly make very little difference in the color but that's kind of why I'm curious to see at this point uh, if we can just go any deeper with our saturation. So that would be a total of 35 drops, but since we have done this in steps, um, you could always pick a color that you like along the way and just stop with that amount of drops. So I'm just trying to stir this thoroughly in and I'm gonna put this in the soak. The water is running pretty clear from this. So I think I'll let this soak and then I may just apply a bit of heat since this is our, probably going to be our last round and get it to just absorb the rest of that color, get the water to run clear, get all that color soaked up and see what color we end up with. So. We'll give this a few more minutes and then we will go ahead and move on. Um, probably just do a little bit of a double boiler thing that I'm going to heat this up from underneath with some steam and try to get the rest of it to soak just so we don't have that blue hanging out there in the water. Now, does it matter a ton? Not exactly. I'm just trying to see if I can get as close to a true black as possible. And see what we can get. So we will be back in a few minutes. This has some time to soak. All right, well, we've been soaking at our 35 drop amount for about 15 minutes. Um, we do not have all the blue dye absorbed yet hoping you can kind of see that still and I'm hoping these colors um, show up that you actually can see the gradient changes as we keep adding in more dye so to speed up the process I've got um, my hot plate set up just so I didn't have to move camp and I'm going to just put some steam under this bowl all right so we've been cooking for probably about 15 almost 20 minutes um, again, set up the 
hot plate here just so we didn't have to move, but I probably could have done this quicker if I had just put this on a pan on the stove and put it on a bit of the simmer. Now, we've got almost all the blue absorbed. There's still a wee bit of blue in here, and this will probably absorb if I just let it sit. The water is warm, not hot, and it's hot, but it's not like boiling. Um, you don't want to cook your yarn and felt it, obviously. So you don't want to keep it at a temperature that's too hot. I just kind of go with a simmer. Um, the double boiler method can kind of keep things from, I think getting extremely hot is a little bit more controllable. Um, but I will get this steaming. I'm probably just gonna let it sit and try to soak up the rest of that blue. I did add maybe about another half a cup of vinegar because once it was getting warm, we still had not got all the blue to soak up. So that would show us that probably need a little bit more vinegar to help it bind the animal protein. So we will wrap up with that.